In the top left hand side, putting them into the lead for Dragon Kaiser game, and it is dark. Taking on the red dare in the bottom right from Team Liquid, it's Clem. You guys enjoying the cast and the stream today? Just want to take a quick moment to say do consider supporting the channel, help us out by subscribing and following, etc. If you end up watching this series on YouTube, consider liking the video and subscribing to the YouTube channel as well. Hope you enjoy the games as Dark and Clem meet up in this best of two in the World Team League playoffs. Top four right now in the World Team League playoffs. Liquid never been this far in the competition before Dragon Kaiser Gaming. I got knocked out at this stage last year, or last season I should say, by Abydos. Of course, DPG, Kaiser Gaming and separate teams went and uh, won this league many times. DPG pulled the record for winning this league a whole bunch of times. That roster was obviously disgusting at the time and did some crazy things. As he went at one time when Innovation was here, Oliveira actually has time. Uh, aced in that final game of the Grand Finals against Alpha Rex, won it against Zaun. A WTL history for you there. It's a big series, because if Clem gets knocked down now, you're onto a revive, and then with your revive, you have to take out Hero without dropping a map. Oh, well, obviously, I mean, see, I say hero. Obviously, that's if you take a map as Clem. If you just take one, and it's one one. Obviously, if you get two odors, Clem, you've got to take out Dark and Hero without dropping a map with a revive, and that's not going to be looking too likely. As Dragon Kaiser is going to try and stop this momentum of Liquid. Liquid have been going all in way so far. They've been absolutely popping. Been a great team this uh, event in these playoffs. They've been really well doing well. We see a couple of queens, a handful of lings all coming through. And this Reaper's going to be arriving up into the main base in a moment. As we just see the first Zerglings coming across, the Reaper will get turned around. The Ling's going to jump back onto the Reaper for a moment or two as well, so let's get that on the go. Reaper hitting that hatchery. Queen's still coming around. Gonna go chase the Reaper just a little bit as well. No gas in the main base from Darks. He's gonna play this gasless opener. The, the super fast third hatch. Clem should be able to make a bit of a read on that. Taking three hatcheries while also mining gas would have been very difficult. Drops the grenade. Once again, the creep tumor is not going to justify sticking around there. Probably would have lost its life if it went for one more shot, so I get call in the end. First Hellions coming across. Very standard from Clem, just 3cc. Really not a lot to shout about just yet. Little grenade goes down again. Queen's getting bobbed around. The Reaper Hellion's still trying to go up that right hand side. The Queen's still setting up in the front. Approach run halfway done. Overlord's all producing through the drone on the way. Been firing up on the Overlord. I'm just going to be seeing that OV moving towards the natural, trying to look to see a little bit more of what's happening. Hellions back around to the top. Going to get one more creep tumor there as well. It's just going to knock that down quickly. The Queens will spread that creep outwards onto the map also. It's just going to get that going immediately. For the moment, that creep's still coming through. Hellions and a Reaper will join on up together. And all of that established. And Liberator coming out, Marine and the Stim coming through, a few more drones and a couple more roaches all coming through as well. Here, roaches heading across the map, Morph Ravages morphing in, so Dark. Off this kind of very greedy opening, now wants to apply some pressure. Liberators just saw the roaches, the Hellions could threaten a run by here, although more roaches being produced, so maybe it wouldn't get very far, maybe it wouldn't do very much. 
Virgil's arrival and Clem's preparation here is pretty much minimal. Siege tank on the way, but we're a long way off of that. Obviously, all of his other units were out on the map. The Hellions are coming back. Well, what good are they going to do? The Roach Ravager attack is looking scary. The Liberator can see Joe. Cruiser of Bars have been used already, so you can't actually shoot the Liberator down. Dog tries to find a way to dodge about. Seven SCV is lost only so far. That's kind of nutty if we actually only end up losing seven. Like, if he cleans this up now without losing anything additional, that's really kind of wild. This... Libra is going to get a few more shots. Tank is out. And don't get me wrong, this took a little bit of time. It definitely slowed Clem down, and Dark's been doing nothing but droning behind it. But that was genuinely not a bad hold in a ridiculously, what felt like a completely underprepared situation. That was really not so bad, no? Clem didn't even lose that many units, never mind the SCVs. All right, well, there's obviously early game plan disrupted. I mean, he's still going to continue to produce SCVs. 3CC will get to work. Dark now starts up his last, starts up his 1-1 missile upgrades. Start bringing that through as we just have this Liberator going to loop around the top side of the map. It's going to move straight across over there, going to try and take position immediately. Viking works around the left-hand side. Also just trying to take position and figure out what it would like to do over these next few moments. Queen's going to be here. Libra again pushed around once again, keeping back. It's going to siege up one more time. A couple of queens are going to be kept away also. Again, 1-1 one, one combat shields, everything just producing on through for a couple of moments. Get all of this set up. Thing speed, missiles. Roach speed. Everything coming on in. Are on the left side, going to try and find those hatcheries. This way, Clem can start putting some pressure on himself. Having that stim, having that mobility around the map will go a long way to aid him here and immediately just get to cancel and find some creep. Slowing down a fifth hatchery at the very least, so something is better than nothing. Effects loading up. This has got that liberator in the main base as well. Just finding a couple of kills, then backing it off. Clem doing what he always does, which is just being as annoying as possible with those units without letting them be exposed, without letting them really go down or anything. Doing a great job of that is... Now the Roach Ravager is going to come across. The Marines actually catching some Ravagers on the back side. That's not bad. Taking out Ravagers when they're not protected by Roaches is pretty decent. This is a big 1-1 one -one time, and Clem is going to have a lot of really well set up siege tanks. The only issue I have for him is that a lot of his marines are in those medevacs still, so they're not actually out and fighting just yet. As Clem steps forward, the tanks are not under any pressure. The Ravagers do not get close enough to drop the biles. A fifth siege tank shows up. There's not going to be enough biles for everything here, and Clem is making a defense on this initial attempt from Dark. Maybe he needs to take a step back and maybe play... A little bit more towards those siege tanks uh, right now. He doesn't have that many marines left over, but I think he's all right. His tanks are going to press further up. He's going to relocate this factory. The CC is probably going to come through, and actually just looks as though it's going to the fourth base. Clam going to repair the factory as well. A few marines just trying to chase where they can. Dark going to step it back, realizing that this is not working. He's going to have to start up 2-2 instead, and Clam, a comfortable defense here on Oceanborn. That was very nicely done. Marines still trying to move up. Roach Ravager is there to meet those Marines. Tank will siege. Roach is running up this ramp. A few links from the top side. A few other Marines showing up at the same time. But yeah, no. Well, once again, Clem is just going to be able to more or less hold this off. Only 20 supply down when your opponent's playing Roach Ravager. is pretty incredible. Dog doesn't have some sort of insane worker count either. You can just see Clem pushing his tanks further forward. I don't think this is an overextension in the slightest. I think this is absolutely justified. I think Clem has done enough to put himself in a great spot here. And now he's reaping the rewards of that as he can take his fourth base. Still chase down Roach Ravager. He talks to Ravager down on that left side fight. Able to take yet another kill during this all. Stemming forward once again. Now jumping on top of Ravager. Trying to retreat down the ramp. We dodge from the Biles, but yeah, the Ravager's already paid the price. They already went down, so damage was done. He's trying to come back through. The couple creep team is still coming up. <clears throat> and these Marines will try and get forward for that. 
Two missiles coming in. Just going to be having ourselves the tanks. Still sieging, still trying to press forward. I mean, so many ravages being built from Doc. He's super reliant on these corrosive vials. More vials dropping in. Marine still dodging off over to the sides just for the moment. through once again. Tanks are not siege here though. This is where Clem maybe does step a little bit too far forward. He's got tanks further back but they're taking a long time to get siege and I think that was a mistake from Clem. I think that was him going like I say a little bit too extreme on this attack right on that moment so well, that one's a little bit of a shame maybe as now he has to pull back. Still only about 20 supply behind though which against Roach Ravage I think is very manageable. And I tell you what a lot of Dark's army is Ravager based so if there's no Roaches the Ravagers really do melt. You're seeing that right away here. Throws of Battle lands on a Medivac as we go as well, though. Chaos continues to ensue as we see a few more Throws of Battles. A bit more damage being dealt. Throws of Battles still dropping off onto all of these Siege Tanks. Another couple of tanks keep on going down. Just going to be seeing the Medivac lifting one of those tanks out the way. Bringing those out of there. Actually trying to set up Siege Tank still producing through. Roach Rav just still on its way up as well. Marines are nearby. Supplies are now evening out. And again, very good sign for Clem, who's ahead in workers also. Controlling this game. And just looking for a way to close things out as we continue forward by ourselves chasing down this Roach Ravager. It's not completely done yet, but the game is absolutely favoring Clem. It's absolutely looking great for him. He's getting into a better and better spot, making it look better and better for himself. And Dark is not doing anything to really progress his army any further at this stage. You know, for Dark, this is very much seeming as though it's on the way to being done. These Ravagers are still trying to fight as he does, you know, takes fights like these. It's only going to get worse for him. Whoa, 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 whoa. It's essentially the same as time in GG. It is equilibrium. No surprises here as Dark picks the map, which is the most favored for Zerg. Obviously, Radiset is maybe more favored, but Radiset is the veto from Liquid, so you can't pick that one. It's the one map you can't pick as a loser's pick as Dragon Kaizi in this series. So Dark chooses to go to Equilibrium. He has lost the last two Equilibrium games he's played against Clem. In the Wardy TV Christmas Day games and at Atlanta, both times Clem got the better of him on this very big, very Zergy map. So it's not impossible for Clem. But in a way, though, Dark is almost due a win on this map as well. <laughs> Want to think of it like that? Definitely an interesting concept. Let's see how this goes as we get set up. Just going to be seeing our uh, uh, hatchery, drone, etc. Going through for a couple of moments, getting this all on the go for a little while. Seeing our uh, opening will be interesting to see how aggressive Clem is, if Clem is kind of aggressive at all, or if Clem just sort of plays a fairly passive style and just says, okay, Doc, like, I'm happy to go to the later stages. The orange circles on top points are lives, they're lives. So Dragon Kaizy Gaming is ahead right now. They have one life, Lex uh, one life ahead of Clem, uh, ahead of Team Liquid. But they will lose that life when this game ends no matter what. It's just a question of whether Liquid will also lose a life if Clem loses this map. If Clem does not lose this map, then Liquid will maintain two lives and Dragon Kaizu Gaming will drop to two lives. comes across is not going to take any sort of crazy fast gold base is not going to play that risky game it's going to play this pretty standard for the moment actually scv gets there just as it goes down nearly got a block off as the reaper will move into the natural and again see a little bit of what's going on with this a bit of scout information gained and of course just dancing with the first few circles of the game just trying to cause a little bit of trouble a little bit of chaos here been coming about just going to chase the reaper away as well CC finishes up out on the low ground, so we just get that into place as we do have 
few Ling's still nibbling around here and there. So a bit more damage being done. The Reaper tries to dive into the main for a little bit as well. Also trying to see what's up and not really succeeding in any way. Not finding too many opportunities for the moment. Moves by, we're just gonna have ourselves the queen coming across again, looking for a little bit of extra damage on that one. Just gonna be seeing these few lings trying to stop these Hellions from getting in. They do not have speed, so Hellions should be able to clean them up. And now it's a question of how many drones do we get before the Hellions and the Reaper get shut down. We're gonna get at least two drones, probably three easily. Finishes up there. These units were kind of low going in. This last Hellion just escapes around. Gets chased for a little further. That will be that. A couple seconds as well. So there you go. John's still in trouble here. This is exactly what you love to see early on in Equilibrium as a Terran player, right? Zerg map, but you're taking momentum early. You're putting yourself in a position where you can likely play out a very good situation for yourself. So you got to kind of love that a little bit, right? Like that is kind of exactly where you want to be. That gives Clem probably one of the better starts he could have asked for here as Spoken Ford even gets that creep tumor as well. Yeah, I think Clem's going to be very happy with this right now. Vanshee with the cloak. Coming up right now as well. Stimpak will come through along with this. Queens are there. Hellions get pushed back. Skullcrow is still coming into play also. We have in ourselves a few moments of uh, Hellions dancing about and taking some damage. So some shots coming off. Again, I mean, this is now Dark trying to take a goal base, but Clem with some good opening still, uh, with a good opening here, no doubt, and that he is absolutely going to be loving his position thus far. He can only be excited about how he continues to advance it, because yeah, he really is in a great spot here. He's put himself in a great place. Let's see if he can keep it up. We have against impact on the way through. Just gonna be having ourselves the command center coming up, a couple extra barracks all coming through as well. So all that continues in for the moment. And again, it's just the kind of opening where you can see a lot of the time the Terran coming across the map with one of their first attacks and then doing crazy amounts of damage. Dark is very good at keeping himself alive in difficult positions and at low scenario low tech uh, low eco scenarios. Moves like this are great. Seven SUVs going down, but the Banshees are going to get some drones. They're at least undoing some of the damage Doc just dealt. Hellion show back up. 14 SUVs, though. Clem, unfortunately, kind of lets Doc get a lot done. And more Lings are showing up. The Hellions go up into the main base. Oh, they can, they can come back down. I was going to say they can come back over here, no problem. I don't know if these Lings should have continued to come in through, honestly. I feel like that was a, a little bit of a gift, honestly. That didn't feel like a real necessary kind of way of playing this, but... So it went. It's going to be seeing the Banshee still there, pushing back a few extra Zerglings as well. Now making our way on toward the mineral lines once again. Continuing to get that set up coming through. Banshee's come around, three drones are dropping. And a couple of tech clubs, the engineering bay is all building as well. Start to produce on through and just having ourselves the alien still chasing down a couple more zerglings. And just still fighting. So many of these lings were gonna get roasted, however, now the aliens get surrounded. The banshees will try and help out against as many lings as possible, just trying to deal damage wherever they may. Damage is coming around across the board at the moment here. We do see the lib showing up as well, even more drones going down. I do like the amount of damage that Clem has been doing. I kind of love that Dog's getting Burrow, though. That sort of thing that can bring him back in a game, right? You get some Burrowed Banes going off. It would be really fantastic for you. And if Clem wins this game against Dark, and then he gets to play against Hero, Clem's TVP has been looking really good. It's starting to look like perhaps a really good time for Liquid if Clem wins this game. I do think this game has got so much on the line. 
In terms of Clem having potential success here, the Ling is trying to wrap around. I guess Dark is feeling kind of desperate because that was not the fight at all. That was absolutely not it. I feel like Dark's had a few games like this lately where I feel like he's ended up starting to make like odd decisions at some kind of you know at some point of the game. It's been a little bit wild, a little bit weird. Okay, we take a moment to see Clem setting up once more. He's going to try and come in around the top side and take a bit of a position. We're seeing the queens are there to push the Medivax back. Some Medivax do get pushed away. Queens unloading once again. Just going to come straight through. Queens, Ling is pushing back where they can. More Medivax loading up. Clem going to keep the aggression going again. Massive map, so it's not easy for Clem to come through and end a game on a map like this one. And that's kind of the issue. Is that it's kind of a, a big block to try and get across and, you know, make something like that happen. So currently not succeeding in such things. Still has the supply lead, like I say, in this match, or in this map, in this matchup. That does not necessarily always mean you're just going to win out, right? A lot of the time being in the supply lead is great for TBZ, but Equilibrium does a lot to undo things. There's a Widowmine left behind there from Clem, gets some shots. Fires up a little bit. Damage being done. I'm still pressing around this top side, entering the left side of the map here. And while you do have yourselves a group of Lings trying to get across, what my shot was decent, and these Lings just kind of coming in a few at a time are not going to be it. The Queen's on the high ground necessary, the Bailing's necessary, another Widowmine shot trails in, and again, the damage just keeps on piling up, it feels like. Queen's on the bottom left-hand side, just going to come through here. Dark is really starting to trail in supply, and again, if Clem can keep on pushing and keep this momentum up, Without being stopped himself, he may very well just be on his way to the W that we've been talking about. And how important that would be for Liquid as these queens continue to go down. A few links still trailing across. The queens are going to be in a lot of trouble, in fact. It's going to be seen the medevac bottom left. Lifting up, back and away. Marine still fighting. Queen's still taking a lot of shots. Dark is down 40 supply or so at the moment. I mean, that number just keeps rising. First it was like 15, 20-ish. Then it was like, okay, he's down 30 supply, and now he's down 40 supply. Just getting to be more and more problematic here as, again, Clem about to undo the work that Dark has done. We scan out over on the left side here as well. Again, another look to see just what's up, what's happening. Clem is going to go and uh, have to play defense, though, and actually Dark gets in for 13, 16, 17 SCVs. A lot of damage dealt in that regard, so that works. What about some Burrow? Still some Burrow Banelings over there as well. They could be quite impactful if Clem walks across them, or even if he just sends SCVs back to that base. The problem is, this is very much so damage that's maybe coming a little bit too late to really save the day. Dark is... You know, even with that damage done, equal on workers, right? This is not him putting Clem into a, you know, last attempt to, you know, attack because his economy is low. It's not like that in the slightest as Clem. Maybe a little over eager pushing forward here. May need to lift into these medivacs. Friendly fire is not being his buddy when it comes to the Widow Mines. Finally, a couple of better Widow Mine shots. And Clem's still now 50. I, like I say, it keeps going up. First it was 15. That was, you know, when I had lasted this speech, it was 40. Now it's 50 supply difference in this game. A lot of it in army. He is down in armor upgrade. He forgot to start plus two initially. I think he, he was only on one engineering bay for a while. I think he actually probably forgot to start plus two armor. Or plus one armor, and then he's now forgetting to start plus two armor because of it. Knock on effect. Seven more drones still going down here. The queen's coming across. Playing a little bit of cleanup as well. As these banes continue through. And the boats are just going to get jumped on and cleaned out. They are going to fall as well. Nine SCVs having dropped down dead. Again, the problem is you lose nine SCVs and yet Clem is ahead by ten workers in a Terran versus Zerg on Equilibrium. Clem is now taking the gold base, establishing himself more control in this map. And Dark is not currently able to deal with this. This game is absolutely just continuing to head in Clem's favor. 
Clem this, Clem that. That's all I'm really saying because it really has been a bit of a Clem series. This game, especially from the start, started to get some drones early on, and he really never looked back from there. He now grabs this hatchery. But Ling Bane's going to find the backside of this gold, so maybe some opportunities for something on this. Let's see if these will pull away. The Ling Bane chasing. The Bioforce getting out of there as well. Going after that spawn pool in the main base and just seeing still. Ling Bane showing up over here. Planetary Fortress will be in trouble. Planetary Fortress will go down as the SCVs are still getting picked apart as well. In the main base, though, Clem is making up for it. He is diving through, getting further damage still. Continuing to put himself into a better and better spot. Yes, and a couple of final lings out down to the south. Spread will be shot at one more time here. Again, being cleaned up for the moment as we do have the game being called Clem. You can see the happiness on his face. He knows how important the 2-0 is. And